the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Hey, everybody, God bless you. Hey, I hope you had a great week, uh, and I hope you have a great week coming up. Uh, and and I, I hope that you, for this day or Sunday, or the uh, 3rd of September, I, I hope that you uh, had a great day of rest and worship uh, because Yeshua is Lord. And and uh, there's no exception, even today, we had real good discussions and a lot of different sub-topics. But the, the, the main thing we want to be able to talk about uh, today, uh, and, and, and just use and chew on this for this uh, this week, because I will co continue to cut these down, uh, one, two, three, four, A, B, C, and D, uh, as far as uh, the, the study of the session is concerned. Uh, but it, it's, it's, I also find it is very important for us to be on track of doing what uh, Christ told us to do, Yeshua, you know, Jesus, for those who are used to the, the uh, traditional name, Jesus, I'm using Yeshua, Yeshua is the Hebrew name for Jesus, uh, when he was walking as a, as a Hebrew, he would hear Yeshua, uh, so you just need to know that. Uh, for your uh, understanding of Bible growth, Bible growth. But the thing is, what did he talk about? And what is his message? And I call it is because his message not only then, but applies now. And we want to make sure that many of you that's going to listen to this subject today, uh, and as we go forward, if you're going to profess to be Christian, if you're going to profess that Jesus, Yeshua, is your personal Lord and Savior, then what we want you to do is learn, read the Bible for yourself, and understand the importance of following Him as the example for your life and for my life, opposed to traditions that I'm concerned has caused many to fall into what I've been talking about uh, recently is still kill and destroy. And thank you doing it for, for Christ. And what I want to make sure, and we, let's continue to press this through, is what did Jesus teach is the actions that you are supposed to do concerning the furtherance of the gospel, which is the new, which is the good news. I, I don't think any stealing, killing, my thing is I don't think, I know nothing dealing with stealing, killing, or destroying has any association with the teaching of Christ. And, and that's why you need to make sure that we do what Christ has taught us. Uh, if you want to be a Christian. If you don't want to be a Christian, that is totally your choice. Do whatever you do as whatever you want to be. But if you want to be a Christian, we're going to hold you, I'm going to hold myself accountable as a Christian. And my accountability is based on the Word of God, the New Testament. To be a New Testament saint, I'm holding myself and holding you and understand this, the ultimate person that holds you accountable is the Lord. Amen? So you got to understand that. So, but you, you, I do want to say as we go forward too is that your actions, if you're into the steal, the kill, and destroy, not only are you ruining the lives of other people, you're also hindering the gospel. You're actually a, what we call an anti-Christ because you're doing the anti-anointing, right? You, you're doing the, the, the Christ means an anointing one, and you, you, you're going against the teaching of the anointing to make you an anti-Christ. You're not the anti-Christ, but you're actually in his camp, you know, 
you, you know, God's supposed to be your father, but if you're not, if God is not your father, then we know who is your father. So think about that. Amen. And here's the uh, subject that I'm using today. And like I said, let's not hold each other accountable, not condemning one another, but encouraging one another to do the right thing instead of the wrong thing. Because it's just, it seemed to be an influence for such a long time. Uh, I think I said one time in the study that since the three, third century CE, that many people converted toward doing the opposite of Christ's teaching, you know? Uh, and the gospel was written uh, like, I think it was basically completed by the hundred, first century uh, uh, CDC or around that time. And it was canalized the, as far as the, in the Council of Nicaea in 325. Uh, uh, century or year to, to talk about the canon, what we consider the Bible today. So, and you ask yourself why those things are taken out. Then again, even if those things are taken out, why are people still doing what they're doing? The subject is who convinced Christians to conform to stealing, killing, and destroying? You know, John 10 10 said, the thief, the thief, which is the devil. Uh, come not but to steal, kill, and destroy. But Christ said he came to get life, life more abundantly. Christ also told us to go and preach the good news. Christ also told us that uh, a new commandment in John 13, 34, a new commandment I give unto you that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Uh, and, and, and even that one I was just showing it that Romans 12, 2 said, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind uh, to conform to the image of Christ, not the image of this world. And the image of the world does deal with steal, kill, and destroy. And like I said before, and I, I'm covered off now so you can see me fully, is that and Christ gave a, a new commandment. So therefore, we should be able to go up, execute our walk as a Christian based on the commandment, the new commandment Christ gave. Uh, that new commandment uh, clearly says that uh, John 13, 34, a new commandment I give unto you that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. <laughs> Verse 35 says that Men will know that you are my disciple for the love that you show one another. I mean, that's 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 the essential message and commandment of Christ. And then some of you probably sit there saying, "Well, I go by the new command. I mean, the old commandment." And 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 the old commandment is is rolled up into two great commandments. Most of you may have heard that. It says to the first commandment is in that two great commandments is to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy mind, all thy strength. And then the, the, the second part of the great that, that commandment, the second, the second part of the second great commandment is to love your neighbor as yourself. And I hope you understand, your neighbor is not anybody with just the same skin complexion, the same uh, country that you come from. You, you, you're part of this, this world and, and people in this world are your neighbor. Uh, and, and you know, like I said, if you're a cardinal, you, and if you are not a Christian, you reject that. But if you are a Christian, you go by the commandments of God. You go by the word of God uh, and understand that you're supposed to love one another. Because that's the, that's, the truth, people prefer you to, or people get along when they love one another, opposed to hating one another. Because hating equals to they steal, kill, and destroy. So that's why I wanted to go over this, and, and we, we do a quick study on this. Uh, I just want to make sure we capture this. I mean, today we talked about so many subjects. I just want to get these <laughs> this piece in there. Like I said, who convinced Christians? Who convinced you? Who convinced your family? Who convinced a large number of people to conform, to steal, kill, and destroy? 
And you're supposed to conform to the image of Christ. You know, and, and you're supposed to be, in like Romans 12, 2 said, be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the new mind. That, that's what the question is. We're still killing the story of with Christianity. You know, I remember one congressman or senators that then say, because they're talking about banning books or, or some books need, don't, don't need to be in the, in the hands of children because it indoctrinated them to hate from their perspective. It really indoctrinated them to see what hate did to people. Well, that's, that's the reality of the case. But let's go further than this. He said, why don't we say Jesus loves me? Yes, I know, for the Bible told, told me so. And, and the, the center piece of that, it said, the Bible, the New Testament, says that Christ loves you. Now, his statement said, not only Jesus loves me, yes, I know, for the Bible tells me so, but it also tells you to love your neighbor. It also tells you to love one another. That's critical because it's all right for you to know that God loves you. But the question is, do you understand that God wants you to love one another? That you are brothers and keepers of one another. Amen? So that's important. <laughs> you really need to get that. But many have been conformed to steal, kill, and destroy. And some of you are going to say, that's not true. But that's what we're going to use history to show that. And, and nobody can deny that. Nobody's going to sit there and tell you, oh, well, uh, that didn't happen. No, they're going to sit there and say maybe it wasn't. Uh, it was just. It was just the way things were. You know, that it was just that's how it is. It was the way things were, and you need to understand. The point is, what did Christ teach? Who are you supposed to follow? The scripture says that Jesus said in John 14, 6, look them up, look these scriptures up. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to follow but by me. So regardless of how people think they, how people were, regardless of how people thought, regardless of how people felt, their way, their feelings will not get you to the Father. Only the way you're going to get to the Father is through Christ. You, 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 are you hearing the words that come out of my mouth. The only way I'm going to get to the Father in heaven, the only way you're going to get to the Father in heaven is through Jesus, Yeshua's way. It's going by His way, His truth, His life. He gives life. I can't give you life. Racist people can't give you life. And any other type of group of people can't give you life, but Christ can. That, that, that's just understanding. And I think a lot of cases we don't recognize these things. We don't understand these things because when we come into the body of Christ, we think we know all things. And yet we don't know much about the scriptures. And we need to know about the scriptures. We need to understand the scriptures. And you know, I wonder about why this subject stands out uh, into 2023 is people can't read or don't want to read. Find a better word, people don't want to read the Bible. Because I, I can't see how you can read the Bible and hate somebody because of the color of their skin or read the Bible and hate somebody because of their political affiliation. Read somebody because of what they believe is right and you believe something different. I, and so you hate them. I, I, I don't believe you got it from reading the Bible. You know why I don't believe? Because that's not in the Bible for you to do that. It's not in the teaching of Christ. Some of you like to refer back to the Old Testament. I'm going to tell you something. Christ, if you want to call, you want to call yourself an Old Testament saint, then call yourself an Old Testament saint. But if you want to call yourself a Christian, you, you do what Christ taught you to do. Not because I'm telling you, I'm telling you because he said you to do that. Amen? And I think a lot of cases, many of us, you know, I think the people from the 3th century all the way to the 15, 1600s, all the way up to 1900s, uh, 19, uh, 1930s or so, many people could not read. 
Many people couldn't read. We know the people that were held in slavery, it was illegal for them to read. But many people that uh, did not have money, did not have wealth, a lot of them couldn't read either. So you know what they did? They relied on what their ministers, their pastors taught them. And in some cases, they can't even read. So to them, they may have somewhat, <laughs> they at least said, Lord, I, 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 they told me to do this. And I, I know how they feel in my heart, but they told me to do this. And I couldn't read, but they know right and wrong anyway. And uh, they're gonna have the answer to God and they have the answer to God. And we're, we're talking about those things later in life, but those people who did all these bad things, uh, you know, Catholics say people go to purgatory. Well, purgatory doesn't exist, but hell does. And some people automatically, some people already confined themselves to go to hell. They did. They like, I, I got to work my way out of hell. But the scriptures say yeah, there's, there's nothing you can do to get out of hell that we're aware of. Uh, they need to show you in the scripture, not show you through some dogma or anything else, but they tell you, tell me how you can get out of hell. And why would you, why would you wait to get to hell and try to think you can work your way out of that to heaven, opposed to working your way now by receiving Christ as personal Lord and Savior. Okay, all right. So, but look at this. I think a lot of cases, many people don't read. This is a research that was done, I guess, called Lifeway Research. Uh, it said, how, how much of the Bible have you personally read? And as you go into this study, in this segment of the study, the question is, how many, how many of you have read the Bible? And I'm going to tell you specifically, how many of you have read, how many of you read the New Testament? I, I, I'm, I, the Old Testament is, is, is our examples. The New Testament is the teaching for a Christian. Not for Hebrew, not for the Jewish people. Well, unless they receive Christ, but it's for you, the Gentiles, you, the people uh, that are that are reborn again because the New Testament told you so. But look at this this research and tell me does it apply to you? The question is, how much of the Bible have you personally read? That's that's the question. My buddy gave it to me, and he he had a good point. You know, a lot of people profess to be Christians, but let's look at it. Uh, it says right here, ten percent of the people who profess them profess themselves to be Christians have never read it. It said number of them. They, you know, the Bible does not say come by here and hear the word of God. But 10% don't even read, read any of it. 13% only a few sentences, only a few sentences. I mean, maybe if you look at the Bible, how many sentences there are in the Bible. When a person says few, they, a few mean, that, I guess that's subjective, right? But what are a few sentences that they're talking about? Uh, when there's thousands of sentences uh, in the Bible. <laughs> It may be million. Okay. Then it said 30% says several passages or stories. Uh, and I, I think some people, most of the story, they're talking about the ones they read in children's stories, such as David and Goliath, right? Uh, but they have, they don't know, they don't know several passages. 30%. Only know 30, 30, only know a few passages or stories in the Bible. Does that fit you? Ask that question. Ask that question to yourself. Does that fit you? 15% at least half of it. 15%, and I don't know what the population they do, but it doesn't matter. If you're listening to this, you're looking at these, uh, this slide, or you're hearing this video, and the question comes to you. And it says here, 15% at least half of the Bible. At least half of it. And I encourage, if you're going to read the Bible, read the New Testament first. Because that tells you what a Christian is supposed to be. Amen? It tells you what a Christian is supposed to be. 12% uh, almost all of it. 12% uh, said they read all of it. 
Almost, excuse me. No, 12%, almost all of it. Almost all of it. They read it. Um, 11%, all of it. So 11% of the people that profess to be Christians from this sample population, which means it doesn't necessarily be true, because each individual uh, who speaks for itself can speak, and only they can. You don't have to count all the two billion people in Christianity. But based on the population, it says two billion, over two billion Christians in this world. And of that two billion, if this stat, this, this survey is reflective of it, only 11% read all of the Bible. And then all of it more than was 9%, meaning they read the Bible uh, more than once. They read it, they read it, and they read it again. And it's good because it's not about reading it. It's about reading and living it and continue to read it throughout your life. Uh, meditate on the scriptures uh, all the time. Now, I can tell you, the, I've read the Bible more than once, and I'm, and, and I'm not concerned about being of the 9%. I'm giving you something you might want to use as a, as a uh, means to read the old Bible. I actually incorporate the Bible in my prayers. I got morning prayers, I got night prayers. And I, I committed myself to read one chapter of the New Testament in the morning and one chapter of the Old Testament at night. And look at this. For you, most of you, I think you'll love this. Now, because of audiobooks, I basically read with the audiobook. I actually have the scripture in front of me, and I have my audiobook. So, you know, especially those words, a lot of those words you can't pronounce, uh, especially in the Old Testament, uh, I, I use audiobook. And I would encourage all of you to do that. I would just, just hear it and read it at the same time, or read with the audiobook uh, in your morning prayer, and read with the audiobook in your evening prayer. I bet you'll find a blessing, especially because, like I said, the Old Testament, uh, by getting someone else's audiobook to, to read it while you're looking at it with your eyeballs, uh, you you enjoy it because you're not going to struggle with the, the wordings that, you know, those names, a lot of cases, I mean, Yeshua, I many of you are like, oh, Yeshua, I've never heard that before. Well, like I said, that's a Hebrew name, but it's, it's still a different pronunciation. And so when you look at with all the the different places, everything else in the, in the Bible, uh, audiobooks are great tools to, uh, you know, pronounce those words, pronounce those names, uh, pronounce those vocations. So I encourage you to do that. And it's, it doesn't take much. You go, you, you, I recommend you pray every day anyway. I do recommend you pray in the morning. I recommend you pray at night. And I recommend if you do this, incorporate the, a chapter. Just commit yourself to a chapter. You'll be amazed. You'll get to the New Testament done within seven months. If you read one chapter a day, using an audiobook. You would, it would take about a year to, or more, to listen to one chapter a day of the Old Testament. But once you've read through it, start all over again. Just commit that, commit reading as part of your prayer life. And I guarantee you, you will be amazed of how those scriptures will open up to you each time you read them. For the New Testament, you read over and over again uh, as part of your uh, prayer life. And then you can reflect on those scriptures uh, during the day is what I recommend. But I guarantee you, you, it'll be easier for you if you do that. Because you want to get into, we need to get that percentage of all of it more than once to 80%. And you can do that if you incorporate a chapter a day as part of your prayer life. Ask God to help you reveal the understanding, the revelation that you get. But that's the best, that's a good way to get that. Just incorporate that in your prayer life, amen? But like I said, this this research was done. We don't know about the population, because we know it was not a population of two billion plus people. But we know there was a sample that could be reflective 
of the rest of the body of Christ. So, once again, look at this chart. Ask yourself, how much of the Bible have you personally read? Use, I recommend the recommendation I gave you, yes, use the audiobooks and incorporate listening a chapter a day so you can chew and meditate on that chapter uh, during the day for the New Testament and going to sleep uh, with understanding of that chapter that you read in the Old Testament. And I guarantee you, you will find that God is talking to you all the time. And you understand God's talking to you based on the words coming from the Bible. Amen. Uh, that, but that that was an eye opener, and I wanted you to I wanted to share that with you because I, I think that's why sometimes people are conformed to steal, kill, and destroy because they don't recognize that they if they read the Bible, every last one of us will be held accountable. To uh, God, you know. Uh, matter of fact, if you think about it, when I was uh, reading the, uh, the scriptures, I'm going through the slides, and like I said, you should read. It, it's, it's it's important to read because when you think about it, why is it important to read the Bible? Well, look at this. He gave us the uh, Lord's Prayer. I, I'm going to wrap it up with this. He gave us the Lord's Prayer. In, in uh, Matthew 6, starting verse 9, After this man, therefore, pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. His will is his word. That's why it's important for you to read the word of God for yourself. Because you understand his will. Not your pastor, not your denomination, not your political party, not your friends, not anybody but God. But through the Bible. <laughs> and so you want to say this will. That's why it's important for you to read the Bible. Thy will be done where? In earth as it is in heaven. So Christianity is not about trying to get to heaven or, or waiting till you get to heaven. Christianity is living now, doing his will now in earth. He said, give us this day our daily bread. His daily bread is the word of God. So once again, if you read the scriptures that I was recommending, use an audio book if you want to, is to read a chapter a day, a New Testament in the morning, an Old Testament night, and you will read the entire Bible in, in no time. And you will grow from it as well. But he said daily. Give his word daily. And forgive us of our debts and we give our debt to us. You need to know that. That's part of the that's why he gives it. I call it the Lord's Prayer, the Reminders Prayer, too, that you must forgive others as you forgive your, as you want to give, receive uh, forgiveness, you want to be forgiven as well. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver from evil, but thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So that's why it's important in the Bible, the Lord's Prayer. The Lord, Lord taught us to read his word. His will is his word. And don't forget 14. Uh, Matt, verse 14, so if you give men the trespass, then you have the Father also forgive you. That's why you need to read the Bible. Know that your forgiveness means that God forgives you. But 15 said, but if you give men not the trespasses, neither your Father forgive your trespasses. And as I was telling you, 1 Timothy 2, 4, who will have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. The truth, once again, is the word of God. So you want to read the Word of God daily so you can understand the full knowledge of the truth. And don't forget Romans 14, 12, so that every man, every one of us, every one of us, you, myself, should give an account of himself to God. That's the scriptures. And that's why it's important for you to <laughs> read the Bible. And let's move from this uh, 9% of all of, or of all of it more than once into 80 and 90%. We need to read the Bible. We need to get that 9% changed to 80% for yourself. It's for you. Amen? So that's why I think you should read and that's why we want to say and I believe there are many people conform to steal, kill, and destroy is because they don't know the will of the Father. All they know is what other people say, all they know is what other people have done, all people are doing. But the reality is, what does the Word of God say? 
Amen. So that's the first session. This is going to be section. This is the intro. Uh, a, you know, I'm going to break it down to A, B, and C, and D. And I'm just asking you to to listen to these sessions throughout the week and and meditate on them. And don't forget to subscribe. And you know, leave a comment as well. But remember, Christ is Lord. And I hope you have a great week. I hope you have a great week until I see you next time. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for listening. And this is uh, the intro. And then we'll go into the other session uh, next. Amen. God bless you. Check later. Bye-bye. <laughs>